Can running build muscle? Now, most people might look to running for weight loss. Very few are gonna look to running for getting stronger and building muscle. But why is this? Where do these preconceptions come from? Well, I want to know if there's any truth behind this. So today, we're gonna to find out. Most of us associate building muscle with strength training, so heading to the gym and lifting weights. Why do we not associate running with strength training? Well, I think it actually has something to do with the fact that running is usually an aerobic activity, and as a result, we're burning quite a lot of calories, and if you do have a good nutrition plan you're following, then you will actually lose weight from running. But that has nothing to do with muscle itself. So. I'm actually going to answer the question already. Running can build muscle, but don't worry, that's not the end of the video. There's actually far more to it. The basic action of running, of course, requires your muscles, predominantly those in your legs, to be working. If you put your muscles under new stress, it will cause micro trauma as a tissue is damaged. The muscle tissue will then regrow and naturally become bigger. That is as long as you allow your body the time to recover through rest and the protein required through your diet. This is the magic formula for building muscle and getting stronger. All right, there are a few confusing points that we actually need to consider. What do the scales say? I mean, the scales don't lie. You heard that one before? Well, that is true when it comes to our actual weight, but it isn't necessarily true when it's indicating whether we've gained muscle or not. So it's going to depend where you are on your running journey and your body composition. But as you start to increase your running, you could see the scales go down, but you could also see the scales go up. So this is why the scales are not really a great way of showing your running progress when it comes to developing your strength. All right, if you're losing fat tissue, you're going to lose weight. But that is only true if you're not gaining muscle. Because remember, muscle is a tissue that's more dense than fat tissue, so it weighs more. So really, you actually want to be looking at the circumference of your waist or your thighs or some other measurement alongside the scales. Another thing to note, when you're starting to do more running, you're naturally going to need more fuel. Your body's going to want to store more glycogen so it can fuel the muscles when you're doing your running. Well, when it's storing more glycogen, it's actually automatically going to be storing more water at the same time. So that water retention is actually going to make the numbers on the scales go up, even though it's not really a true representation of your weight. Now, I just want to quickly delve a little deeper into the importance of building muscle as a runner. And who better to speak to than a strength and conditioning coach who predominantly works with runners. So earlier, I spoke to Chris Hendy and I asked him, what is the best way for a runner to go about building their strength? Well, first up, Chris, it, can you answer my question nice black and white? Can you build muscle from running? Yes, for sure. Yeah. And where does that limit come to then? So, you know, I know you're an advocate for supporting running with gym work, but why do we need gym work? Why can't we just build enough muscle through running on its own? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to building muscle, like you want to be think, making sure that you're kind of thinking about the right, think about it in the right way. So we're not looking to increase the muscle mass. Where that when that's hypertrophy, we're looking to increase like, the muscle density, the strength of it, the, the, the tissue quality. So that's hyperplasia. So for us to do that, we obviously need to be kind of training consistently throughout the week. We want to pretty much be training consistently throughout your whole training program, just because we want to be kind of keeping you topped up and keeping you on point with your training. So um, for us to do that, we need to kind of make sure that we have enough energy availability we need to make sure that we're recovering we know we're following a, a nice progression with potentially deloads throughout that week throughout that month throughout that program just to allow that adaptation to occur so for us to gain muscle yes you need to obviously you need to have a training program but you also need to be aware that you're kind of considering all those other variables as well because without considering those the recovery and the nutrition the, the fueling etc you're just never going to see those adaptations those wins from the, from your training great and final question you talked about sort of you're not wanting to to get big you're wanting to get strong which is a really kind of i think a big thing in the running world that people think they need to be lighter but they still want to be stronger and they're conflicted with this of like oh i'll go to the gym i'm going to get heavier how should they, you know, what sort of exercises should they look at and what structure of, the, of that training should they go to the gym so that they're not going to have this problem of hypertrophy? Yeah, so your strength to weight ratio, you're always looking to improve that relationship. So, you know, just getting skinny isn't going to work because you're going to be weak and just getting strong is potentially you're going to go the other way. So you want to make sure that we're kind of finding that wonderful little kind of window in the middle and everyone's somatotype, body type is going to respond differently to it. But essentially, if you can get you into the gym or get you into a strength program that's two or three times a week and you're hitting some key some key fundamental movement patterns, so 
a two-legged lower body exercise, a squat or a deadlift, or going into a single leg uh, strength exercise, like a single leg squat or a single leg RDL, going into some form of glute or calf exercise, working that posterior chain, and some form of upper body work as well, a pull up if we can if we can work through those. But working with that type of recipe where you're hitting four or five key principal exercises a couple of times a week, that's <clears throat> progressing through that, increasing the intensity with reps, sets, weights and then kind of changing things up every four to six weeks, that is a lovely formula to, for you to follow pretty much all the way through. And uh, you, you'll start to see those the consistency that you're looking for and those kind of the strengths that you're looking for as well. And what sort of weights and reps should people look at within that? Yeah. Beginner, just get comfortable with the movement. So, you know, lightweight, moving through range, nice range of motion, quality control, 10 to 15 reps, nice and generic. Then as you kind of get more confident, we want to start to kind of develop more strength you want to be able to kind of produce more power so you want to be working working down those rep ranges so you're working down into sets of five to eight maybe even down to lower ranges than that three to four sets but you're kind of progressively getting stronger so you're working more and more towards your own body weight so you know working to maybe 60 70 kilo eventually because in the water you pull you're pulling your own body weight on the on the bike you're looking to hammer out more watts per kilo on the run you're looking to you know, how many how many steps you take on a run you want to be able to move you want to move well and confidently and so body weight is always a nice metric to kind of be working towards so yeah nice one all right i think i need to head back to the gym thanks for that bit of motivation there chris <laughs> awesome stuff if even after hearing all of that from chris you're still not convinced then the gym just isn't for you but you do want to get stronger for your running then you're going to need to look at how you structure your run program and you'll need to add in some shorter and harder reps to complement this strength building. Yes, doing endurance work is going to be putting new stress on your body if you're increasing that, but it's going to take much longer to build muscle at that much lower intensity. Hills are one option. They're perfect for getting stronger as you're working against gravity and you're driving your body up a hill that will require the larger power muscles of your glutes to really fire. And then going downhill, it's going to get your quads eccentrically loading, which is basically doing the same as a loaded squat. You'll notice sprinters are more muscular than endurance athletes. This is in part due to the fact they'll spend more time in the gym lifting, but also because sprinting develops and requires more muscle. So it goes hand in hand. We haven't really delved into which muscles are working and getting stronger from running. Yes, I've mentioned your glutes and your quads, but you've also got your hamstrings, your calves, all the large muscles in your legs. And then you can't overlook those smaller muscles that just because they're not visible, they're gonna be working hard to help with stabilization and making you more efficient with your running. But it doesn't end at the legs. Your core plays a key part in running, especially when you're running hard or you're getting fatigued. It's gonna be part of your breathing muscles, but also part of keeping that really good posture. And if you are doing some faster work, you'll notice that your arms are working a little bit harder. Obviously they're working all the time, but they will get a bit stronger if you're doing some sprint work, but you probably won't really notice the muscle development on your upper body compared to your lower body. If your aim is to build muscle through running or even just to get stronger as a runner, then you're going to need to make sure you stay on top of your recovery, which includes your rest and your nutrition. Making sure your body has enough carbohydrate and hydration before your training session is going to allow you to push yourself and work those muscle groups. Then on the other side, you need to replenish post-training. And this is where protein is important to help rebuild that muscle. Having a protein recovery drink or snack is useful, especially if you're not able to get a meal in for an hour or two post-run. And then sleep, well, that's a cherry on top. Your body does its repair work whilst you're sleeping. So make sure you're giving it enough time to rebuild those work muscle tissues and to get stronger. If you want to improve your running and get stronger, then obviously it makes sense to head to the gym and lift some weights. Although I would actually suggest that adding in some strength and conditioning, even if your sole goal is to improve your running, because after all, getting stronger is only gonna be a positive thing and going to the gym doesn't mean you're gonna get big. I think we've covered that by now. So hopefully this has inspired you to go and do a little bit of extra work to help your running, whatever your goal is. Well, good luck with that. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it. And remember, we're on social media, you can follow us there and if you haven't yet done so why not subscribe here